having a discussion on black male leadership I'll go ahead and leave a link to the video if you want to see the whole thing I did watch the whole thing and I did enjoy listening to the ladies and what they had to say but this is on her channel called Nyla vibes but in this video um, they were talking about nature boy and then they had watched the whole entire video and then they started having this conversation toward the end of the video and it was very interesting because it started to bring up um, a few biblical scriptures and also it brought up the story of Jezebel because you know how men like to talk about women being Jezebels because of the way they wear their hair or the clothes that they they wear or the way they walk and how it's just seductive and she's a Jezebel. They'll throw that all around without even knowing who Jezebel was and what she did. And then it became very clear what the story of Jezebel was because when you look at the story of Jezebel it doesn't just talk about Jezebel it talks about Ahab as well so if you have Jezebel you're going to have to have Ahab because they the story surrounds itself around the two of them and what they did. And in the biblical text, Ahab was the most wicked king of Judah. Yeah, and you know how these men say, I'm an Israelite, I'm a black Hebrew Israelite, I'm Judah, I'm from the tribe of Judah. Yeah, the most wicked king was from the tribe of Judah. And he married this woman who was not of the tribe of Judah. And they did some disgusting things. And I will have to admit when I first started watching it, it was like somewhat entertaining before I started realizing he was abusing yeah. people. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is not, this is like, these are people's real lives. You know, th these people are walking away with in infections and herpes um, and just all kinds. Of, it's real life. And they're so young. Most of the women are like, be, like 21, 22, 23, 24. And then if you go into the comment section, even if you watch some of the videos where Nature Boy has the women up there, you know, these women are being beaten. You know, at one time they weren't even eating, right? They, uh, one girl had been prostituting for him to get money. You know that. You know, what? all this stuff is, oh, oh, girl, it gets bad. This but is with Nature Boy? This is with Nature Boy. You go and you see these women. Women will come into his comments and chastise these women with him. You're not grateful for who you're with. You're not doing the, I mean, women will get up there and take the link on that app and sit next to him and chastise. Malia, when she was literally on the brink of death, there were other black women that were jumping on his panel, chastising her. This lady was, she was about to die. Now, I wanted to pause it there because if you heard what she said, she said there were women and some of these women were older. I would suspect some of them were younger, but there were women who were chastising this young girl basically taking the side of a man that they did not know in a situation that they did not know what was going on in that situation but they were chastising her and this is a long history of that of black women being chastised i even have someone in my family who the church 
basically threw them out because they wouldn't follow what they said or what the pastor said or they defend the pastor it's sick telling her oh well yeah your sickness is in your mind oh and you're ungrateful you're with the king and you're you're misbehaving i mean it was the it was the most horrifying wow. thing i've ever seen but you can go to almost any video and people don't even view them as victims because they don't understand Stockholm. They don't understand psychological abuse. They don't understand that even the average woman that has been abused, how long does it take them before they leave? How long does it take most women to even talk about the abuse, admit it, or even realize that they're being abused? And we're talking about people that are not even 25 years old, but because of the back and forth and all that happens, um, a lot of people just have no compassion and it's just, you know, it's just entertainment for them. It's, it's horrible. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this is very sad. It is, it is, it's horrible. Um, positive elegance, I don't think any of them are underage, but I will say, I believe that Zoka, and that's another thing, they had a baby that just up and disappeared. Who? Oh, yes. So one of the girls, she was about 18 or 19 years old. She was pregnant. We watched this happen. Um, and we watched the pregnancy progress and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden you could tell that this girl was not pregnant anymore. Right now, there are a lot of rumors speculating on what happened, but it, it literally based on what they are saying, it sounds like they sacrificed the baby. No, it, I swear it does. Now, nobody knows what happened to the baby. They claim that the baby died during childbirth and that the hospital did away with the remains or something like that. But people were calling the hospital. Um, and from what I understand, when they were researching it, there's no, whatever happened, I might, I need, might need to dig so I can, um, but I did uh, find out some, some stuff, but some things I could not put quite together. But basically, there's no record of that birth or the death. Mm -hmm. We all know this girl was pregnant. And then a couple of days after like a while, we were like, okay, she doesn't look pregnant anymore. What's going on? Nobody, and nobody talks about it. This was while they were, um, I think they were still in Puerto Rico, if I'm not mistaken, but nobody knows what happened to this baby. Okay. I wanted to stop right there because this is something that also hits on the biblical text. Now, like she said, you know, this is speculation, but let's just say it's true. Child sacrifice and people still do this. People think that, oh, that's then those are people who were superstitious and that's not going on. It is going on and it's going on in several different ways, but if this man who admitted in a video that he felt like he was God. So if he felt like he was God, he feels like he has the right or he has the authority over life and death. So depending on what this man is into, depending on what this little group is into, I would not be surprised it would not surprise me that they sacrificed a child. It's, it's disgusting. And this kind of triggered me. And I'm like, do you mean to tell me that there are a group of black men and women who are now practicing child sacrifice? And if you read the biblical text, it says, you know, in the last days that people would be going backward and will be going back to things that they used to do. And this is something that caused the people of the Canaanites to be killed and destroyed is child sacrifice. So now we're back here again with the child sacrifice. But when she told the story, they were all, you know, singing the song and talking about it. Right. And the thing about it is they were hinting at sacrifice when they were singing the song when she was talking about you know uh the baby dying and stuff like that they were literally hinting at sacrifice and stuff like that it was the weirdest thing ever 
You know what's really sad about all of this? What's that? Is that they had the opportunity to do something great. You know, create a, a sovereign area of people who believe in this polygamy type of stuff and create, you know, a nation of people who are connected to a higher thought vibration and who are vegetarian and natural and living in the sun and, you know, born outside of the chemicals and all of this. And they had the opportunity to do something upstanding or outstanding even. But instead of that, they turned it into some sick, disgusting, perverse realm of and torture, the abuse. Power, and the, huh? more power, the more power he got and the more money he got, because I believe that his intention may have been okay beginning, but it's something about the nacre when they get power that it corrupts them. Now, listening to that, it is true. If you have the opportunity to go to a place and ha build something where you are actually over it yourself and you can have the healthy food and, you know, not being born in a hospital, but to a midwife who would care about the children and you could create a nice little community. But what happens? People start start out you know, oh, God, give me this, and I promise I won't turn bad, and then they get it, <laughs> they they do get it, and then you see what happens, and this happens over and over and over, because it says the heart is wicked, it's just continuously wickedness, you have this intention there is a saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions and I believe that the you start out strong and you, you can see the vision and then it gets twisted as you go along and with more success and more power and more victory you can't stay some people cannot stay humble in that um, there's very few who can because if you look at corporations you look at very wealthy people if you knew their background and sometimes things leak out you start to see see it and there is a scripture that says you know we wrestle not with flesh our humanly body but we wrestle with spirits and principalities it is. I mean, you see it every time when someone is down and out, you know, in poverty or is struggling or, are, you know, normal, a little below um, middle class. You can see, you know, there's something humble about that experience that humbles people and make makes them grateful for what they have but then when they start to get a little more and and they start become comfortable they start indulging in things and they get introduced to things and they go out here you know reaching out to other people and taking on you know some of the traits of these other people and it always happens that they get corrupted they become corrupt and then they become worse than the people who actually corrupted them or they are meeting with people who are conduits for spirits and demons. I mean, you have to be very careful who you attach yourself to. People don't offer up this information. I don't think it's because they're trying to hide it. It's because um, it's not something that people ask of people or even find out to see if this person could be a conduit of a spirit or a demon or if they're into witchcraft or wicca or anything else and now you're creating a soul tie with this person by having a relationship and having children and cursing your children and you're wondering how you got here this is disgusting. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Oh my lord. You know what? I just this is disgusting.
-hmm. And I just, and you know what the crazy part about it is that there was a place down in Georgia, um, out in the desert or in the, in the midlands of Georgia that had this guy who had created nu Nuwapian, that's what it was, Nuwapian Nation, right? Yeah, that's, um, isn't that them? That's, that's Malachi Z. York and them. Oh, the is it? Of that, that he had with those young girls. These, they're poor. They have nothing. Look so you're going to do a whole series of yes. on Black That should be really interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's going to upset some people, but like we have to talk about it. And like, so everybody always wants to say, you know, not my, you know, not my mosque or not my, but like, okay, but so many others, you know, it's almost like the collective argument. It's, it is what it is. And if they don't want to be viewed this way, they have to do something about it. Like we look, look at the nation. Why do we skip over? all of those young girls that were carrying children for Elijah Muhammad. Mm. Let me skip over that. Were there? Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, his great grandson used to work in my salon. He was, he, he worked for me as a barber and mm -hmm. like they're poor. That's the thing. The legacy of the nation is what go and find the offspring of Elijah Muhammad of that, that he had with those young girls. These they're poor. They have nothing. This is disgusting. It is. And then when you talk about it, everybody gets upset and, oh, you're trying to bring down the black man. And you're so, like, it, it, it's, it's just, it, it's so annoying. Now, with her talking about this common thread between the religions, personally, I separate the biblical text from the religion because people like to use it and twist it to mean certain things. But if you really take yourself out of religion, then you can better understand the meaning and the deep meaning of the biblical text. But you do notice a common thread between the religions, Catholicism. Christianity. I call people Catholic Christians all the time because they honestly do not separate themselves. Um, Judaism, Buddhism, um, the Muslim faith, you can find something that has happened within that faith that is against the biblical text. You have no business impregnating um, all of these young girls and then what leaving them trying to protect yourself that is not biblical in the catholic church with the young boys um all of the wealth and riches that they've um, brought into the vatican that is not of the bible and so on and so forth you, you see this small thread where you see there's some corruption within this group or this religion and even the black Hebrew Israelites. You know, it, it all started out as, oh, we know who we are now. Um, this is our heritage. This is our um, history. And we need to be happy that we finally know who we are. And now look, you have Power Rangers in their fringes out on corners yelling and screaming. They were first yelling and screaming at white people, but then they started um, their focus on black women. And that's a part of the curse. That's a part of the original curse. If you look at Adam and Eve and the serpent, we all remember who did the most was Adam. When he said, the reason why I sinned or went against what you told me was because this woman that you gave me, not that I wanted, not I, he wanted a partner, not saying, you know, she gave me this, but I went ahead and partook. It, it, there was no ownership. And you see that throughout the generations it's always the woman did this, the woman did that, the woman is against me. That's where that comes from. They're living in these curses. You don't have to live in them. You do not have to live in them. But 
they're living in it because it's a comfort of not having to take responsibility for a damn thing. This whole thing is embarrassing. Like if you think from, from continent to continent, when you see what is happening, like there just aren't really very many examples. And you know, there are examples out there. However, just like Africa is rife with corruption. I just, I, I don't know, ladies. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, ladies. I, I don't know. This is disheartening. And that's why it, it's it's really frustrating when people say, oh, you guys are just gender warring. This is not a gender war. It, it literally isn't. This is much deeper. That literally diminishes what people are dealing with right now. This is mm -hmm. not boys against girls, men against women. This is not what this is. This is like total degradation of a people. See, that's, it's coming up in the comment section. We, I know we're not going to get into it tonight, but, you know, somebody made the comment, so do black women, you know, then birth their problem. And it's like, but children are innocent, right? But they fall into the baggage of the adults. It's so complicated. Do you really believe that all of them are born innocent? Do you really believe that a demon can give you their seed and it can turn out okay? I think that children, yeah, are innocent. I, I think it becomes complicated because that's what I was asking. You know, that's the question I was asking the ladies when we were having the discussion yesterday or early this morning. I was saying, you know, at what point does, because when he made that women and children's comment, he was talking about all children, right? Abuse of women and children. At what point does the child cross the threshold into the category of what is, you know, seen as the problem. And also does a child that's never done anything to contribute to that problem, do they automatically start carrying that baggage because they've reached a certain age and now all those things are imposed on them? I, I do think there are learned, um, there are taught and learned behaviors and that society has a lot to do with that. Parenting has a lot to do with it. I just don't think that they're born um, evil or bad. I think they're they're born children. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're born babies and innocent, and the world screws them up. That's honestly what I think. I I did I I used to believe that, but I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not complete sold completely out. But just based on what I've been studying and the statistics that I've been reading and just like listening to stories of women and it's no longer completely resonating that it's just an innocent child every time. And I'm, and I'm not saying that you, people should look at their child. That's not what I'm saying. But if we could keep it at if the father is a demon and I do mean demon, I don't mean demonic. I don't mean a bad man. I mean, if the father is a demon, what kind of child is he producing? What are you giving birth to? That I've been reading and just like listening to stories of women and it's no longer completely resonating that it's just an innocent child every time. And I'm, and I'm not saying that you, people should look at their child. That's not what I'm saying. But if we could keep it at, if the father is a demon, and I do mean demon, I don't mean demonic. I don't mean a bad man. I mean, if the father is a demon, what kind of child is he producing? What are you giving birth to? It's deep. Now, I wanted to stop it there because I did do a video on Nature Boy and how he treated a woman who was trying to have a conversation with him. And I did read in the scripture where it said that when you engage with a brute beast, that these men will beguile you. And, you know, if you're unstable you can get caught up in that and then you'll end up 
bearing cursed children. Now, I think both of them are correct. I think um, Yvette is correct and also Nyla is correct. I do believe there are some, because in the biblical text, some children are born rotten from the womb. And also, I do believe some children are born innocent and they have potential, but then adults mess them up at various stages of their life. And also, depending on the man that you have the child with, you don't know what other soul ties he has with people. And if he came in contact with someone who is a conduit for a spirit or a demon. And it now has latched on to this woman who he has a child and a soul tie to. But all of this is leading up to the Jezebel trope and um, Jezebel and Ahab. Yeah, I agree. It's deep. It's something to definitely ponder. But I will just say that you have to really vet. You, you have to vet the people that are going to father your children a lot better. And I'm not saying that from that nasty blaming women um, perspective that we get from a lot of people that like to harp on the women. But I'm saying like we really have to take a, a, take a step back because if, uh, if what a lot of us are suspecting and feeling, if what our, 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 our inners are telling us is going on is happening. That's a really scary thought. So I'll go ahead and end this clip there. And they're right. You have to really ask questions because nobody would really ask that type of question of, you know, who have you been with and what are your belief systems and you know, to get down to the core of what type of activities these men have been in. People, they are concerned about, you know, if this is a stable man, if he's working, if he has enough money to take care of children he may bear and you, if he's the marriage type, maybe sexual orientation and all of that. But I would like to know go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section if you ask men about their religious affiliations um any spiritual ties any beliefs that they have within the spiritual world i don't think people are asking that i cannot even remember a time when i have asked that question of a man that i was dealing with so the way this ties in to the biblical text with Ahab and Jezebel is when she was talking about the women who were caping for a man that they did not know that they have not dealt with and they were admonishing this young girl instead of listening to her being there for her. Now, a lot of men will sit up here and say that, oh, she is throwing her husband under the bus. She's not submitting to her husband. She is bringing other people into the relationship. Um, she's being a Jezebel. She's just out here being disagreeable with her husband. If you disagree with your spouse, you're a, you're a Jezebel, right? Everything, it, you know, you smile and thank someone for holding the door. Oh, you were looking at him sexually. You're a Jezebel, right? <laughs> they do that with everything. But if you notice Jezebel, at one point, her husband Ahab, he was sad. He just had this sunken, sullen look on his face. And the reason why is because there was a man who had a vineyard. The vineyard was close to Ahab's home. So he offered this man money. He said, I will give you a vineyard that's bigger than this and better than this because he wanted that piece of land because he wanted to have a garden near his home. But the man it being rightfully his land and his vineyard said that the Most High said he cannot 
sell this to him. He could not give his inheritance away because he inherited that. So since that's his in inheritance and that has been sustaining him and his family, of course, he's going to pass it along to his children. So his children and his children's children can enjoy their inheritance and be taken care of. So he comes in the house and he's all sad. And then his wife, Jezebel, who was not a part of that, the tribe, she says to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? And basically he told him about, you know, he could not obtain this vineyard. So she sits up here and say, you're the king of Israel. Um, you need to exercise your power and go ahead and go take what you want, right? He, you have the authority over Israel. And she told him, you know, rise up, be cheerful, get your spirits up because I will give you the vineyard of this man. I will give it to you. Remember, this is an inheritance to this man. She said, I will give it to you. She didn't say, you know what? You are not persuasive. You're a punk ass. She didn't cuss him out and call him names. Go create your own create something for yourself stop trying to take this man's stuff she wasn't working her neck she was very agreeable to him she wanted to know why he was sad basically he's in his emotion and she said she's gonna make him feel better what does that sound like that sounds like a ride or die chick she was a ride or die she was there by his side whatever he wanted she'd get for him basically she made up stories and she got this man killed. You can read the whole thing for yourself. But she literally got this man killed, took the land and gave it to her husband. Her husband was so happy and he went to her for certain things what, that he couldn't get. And that's why he was labeled the most wicked king. And he was in the tribe of Judah. This woman would get him anything. Now, Elijah escaped her pursuits. Basically what she was doing, she was having all of the prophets killed, the true prophets who would tell you the truth, tell you how it is, tell you if you were wrong, tell you if you were right. Um, they had to hide them in caves to protect them from her she was killing the prophets the true prophets that's what Jezebel does she will use her feminine wiles she will seduce you but her aim and goal is to kill the truth and to kill the prophets not to be lustful not to seduce not to have sex, none of that. I mean, she can use that to lure you in, but that's not what she's about. That's not her end goal. These are those type of women who will do anything for a man. You know, man in the house messing with the daughter, put the daughter out. They're gonna keep their man. Man doing this and that. They're out there working, taking care of everything. He's using her car, laying up on in her bed, eating up her food, playing video games, not doing anything. But it's okay. She's stressing out. She's break, her body is breaking down from taking on all of this. It's okay. It's those ride or die chicks who are the wicked ones. Because wherever you see a Jezebel, you see an Ahab. She is bowing down and dealing with him. She will get him whatever he wants, no matter what it is, no matter how strange it is, no matter how sick it is, no matter if it hurts other people. 
if a woman's being hurt, she's not going to say anything. She doesn't want to get this man in trouble. I've seen this in the neighborhood. A woman opened her home to a man who was coming out of prison so he could have a place to say, stay. This was a family member. And then this man was mad because she laid down a law in her home and he ended up breaking her television and breaking the televisions of her children. And the family came to her. One man, he wasn't trying to hurt her, but he pinned her down on the ground on the wet concrete saying, please don't call the police. Little did they know the police was called. Then her mother comes with her child to this dangerous situation. The boy had ran off because he knew that she called the police and he was on probation, just got out of jail. And she's doing this out of the kindness of her heart because you see the mother didn't let him in. His family members didn't let him in. And then this her family member had her pinned to the ground, begging her not to call the police. Her mother was there with her child saying, don't call the police, trying to protect this damn brute beast. And then another when the police was there. Another one of her family members came out of the car yelling and screaming. He was talking about how he was going to beat her ass in front of the police. And he was walking up on her. And another one of the male family members had to pull him back because if nobody did anything, he literally would have went over there and beat her like she was a man. He was screaming and yelling and out of control. And he looked like a beast himself. But these are the type of women, they facilitate the actions of these men because they see their sons, because this is how they raise the, their sons in this environment. And now they've become that because they have these soul ties to these men who are brute beast. And now they've cursed their children and they just want you to deal with it and continue to pass this curse down through your lineage. They want you to birth more of them. But I'll go ahead and leave it right here because this is a long one. Go ahead and let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.